Lawrence James here from Dark Arts Lock, picking your home builds and well, picks lots, does some hacking, but as always, and you know it, keep it a bloody legal. And yes, I'm aware I sound horrible. Um, I tested positive for COVID yesterday after being in close contact. Um, woke up yesterday morning, felt like I'd been hit by a train, and then had a coffee and I felt fine afterwards. But, because I was applying contact, I had the test over the next couple of days, and bang, tested positive. Not just for COVID, but for ADV as well, uh, which is kind of like a respiratory infection, kind of like the influenza in a way. Uh, upon doing a bit of research on it, because I had no idea what it was. And no, it's not a Kawasaki motorbike either. Um... Which one of the people that I had to tell that I tested positive for was like, oh, okay, what's that? And then looked it up and she's like, oh, it's come up with Kazaki's. And I'm like, yeah, I don't think it's that. Um, but anyway, today I wanted to tell you is that Australia needs to pick up its game. It really does when it comes to their thoughts on fiscal security. So, I can tell you now that there is research being done into it and analysis that Australia's businesses and companies are very laxed when it comes to thinking about their physical security. And as you know here at DAOP, our mission is to change that. We're about education. Our goal is to help Australians increase their physical security. We do that with our classes that we run for businesses, organisations, groups and events. And our free education here on YouTube. So, as you know, if you watched our live Q&A that Daryl and I did the other couple of days back, now, our recent one, we did brush on this topic. And we did say about the fact that, you know, Australia, we have that mentality of, she'll be right, mate. She'll be right until it isn't. So, you know, how can we change that? Because it is very, very hard. It is really hard to get Australians to change their thoughts. You know, they think just because they have some security cameras up and they put some high security locks on the door and systems in place that, you know, oh, that'll be right. She'll be right. And it's not the case. You know, they don't think about the stuff that we do. You know, they think what we do is some James Bond spy stuff. It's not. It really isn't. You know, a lot of the ways that we get access is literally walking in the front door. You know, it's something that isn't considered. Social engineering is the biggest way to gain access. There was, I think it was a TV show. I remember seeing it on TV a long, 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 long time ago. Can't remember who it was now. But they decided to see how many places they could get into carrying a ladder. And they just walk into businesses and organisations and they just walk in, holding a ladder, and people open the doors for them and let them through. Because it looks like they're supposed to be there. You know, this isn't some spy stuff. This doesn't require a whole lot of high-tech toys to gain access. It really doesn't. As you know, we've spoken in the live stream. we said about, you know, we go into classes that we're taught for businesses. We walk in, we do our presentation, and we show them, you know, how methods that we use. We break down methods that we use to gain access. Then they have a go at methods that we use. We have the half door. They have a go at all the bypass tools, slipping the door latch, using under door tools, over door attacks, and methods like that. They have a go at it. They have a go at bumping. They have a go at picking. They have a go at all of the bypass tools. They look at our hacking equipment that we use. And as we said, they always go and they can't help themselves. They always say, oh, what about getting through our door right here? And we're like, well, they, you know, they start talking. They're like, oh, we've got a high security lock on there. We've got an RFID system, which are extremely, you know, highly encrypted. 
blah blah blah. I'm like, yeah, but you got a spring loaded latch, and look, it's not installed properly. Well, you just slip the door latch and open the door. You got an electronic strike. Look at the size of the gap there. You know, it's massive. Guard bolt plunger isn't depressed. Open it, get into access. So, how can we change Australia's thoughts on it? How can we change this? It ain't easy. It requires a lot. I'm just going to go drink my coffee before I uh, die. <laughs> So how can we change it? Well, it's not just through our education. It's not just through our classes. As you know, we offer penetration testing, which is a fantastic, absolutely fantastic way. Before something bad happens, get us in. Send us in to find these weaknesses. We will find them. We will exploit them. We will get into places. We will do stuff that you wouldn't even think of. You know, we don't just use the high-tech toys to get access. We don't just test your locks and your doors and stuff like that. We will test your staff as well. That is a fantastic way to help. But it's not just us. It doesn't just come down to us doing it and teaching people and running our classes and offering the penetration testing. It also comes down to you. Word of mouth. We can advertise as much as we do. We can share what we do around. But it only goes so far. When it comes to businesses and you hear about a place... You hear about, let's just say, a restaurant. Right? You might look at a restaurant and go, oh, okay. But if you hear from someone, oh, I went to this restaurant last night. The meal was absolutely fantastic. Highly recommend it. You go, oh, I'm definitely going to go there. I want to go and try that out now. Because word of mouth is the biggest spreader. Word of mouth is the biggest advertisement possible. That's what I mean when it comes back to you. You sharing it around. You work for a company. Right? You might say to them, oh, you know, I do some lock picking and stuff like that. It's a hobby. You do lock sport. Lock sport's bloody great. I love it. I really do love lock sport. It's what started me off into this. It's what got me to where I am now. But it comes down to you to tell your bosses, to tell your managers, to talk to your friends and colleagues and family and say to them here in Australia that, look, the research has been done and it's not thought about. It really isn't. Businesses just do not think about it. Because of that mentality of, oh, she'll be right, or it will never happen to me. And it's hard to try and convince them. But you can. You can say to them, look, there's this company, Dow. You know, their job is to help. Their job is to teach you about these weaknesses. It's their job to get into places that they're not meant to get into. And no, it's not some spy stuff. They literally just put on some high vis and walk in your front door. You know, that's the thing. It comes down to you helping us. Spreading this around. Telling your bosses. Telling your managers. Telling your friends and family that, you know, look, you should consider taking your security more seriously. It's not easy, but, you know, in the live stream, as Daryl and I spoke about, the live Q&A, we spoke about, you know, situations, real life situations that happened, stuff that we've come across. At the end of the day, if you have a business, you have a company, and it's breached, you lose money. 
you can lose a lot of money. You have theft. You lose stock. You lose the tools and equipment that you need in order to be able to function and survive. Why wait till that happens? It makes no sense. Why wait for something bad to happen and go, oh, I should have thought about that. You should be thinking about it before it happens. Don't have that mentality of, it will never happen to me. Okay, okay. Yeah, it might. It might not never happen to you. But are you really going to take that chance? Think of it like your vehicle. Right? You put insurance on your vehicle. Yeah, it might, you might not never have an accident. But insurance is there for a reason. It's in case. You know, it's not just your physical security that we teach about and that we take seriously here. We also talk about, and as you know, we do cyber. We teach businesses that there is a 46% chance. You know there is a 46% chance. Which is almost half. That if we put USBs, what look like USBs, out in a car park of a company, right? 46% chance that somebody from your company is going to pick up that USB and plug it into your computers to see who it belongs to. And then guess what? We have remote access. So they weren't USBs, they were rubber duckies. No, that's the thing. Why wait? Why take that chance? You have insurance. Okay. Put us in as your insurance as well. You know, why take that chance? That's why we're here. That's why we offer these services. So we do really appreciate everyone's help and support. And I know we always say, you know, like, share and subscribe. But there's a reason why we say share. Because word of mouth is the biggest advertisement. Word of mouth is the best way for us to get our message out there. And say to them, you know, why take that chance? Because that's what it comes down to, is, you know, why take a chance on something bad happening? Why not prepare for that beforehand? That's why we do what we do. You know, I'm not just saying this because I can. This is because there is a research being currently being done on Australian companies and the analytics of it shows that they don't think <clears throat> about physical security like they really should you know there's the way everything's going at the moment the cost of living is skyrocketing wages aren't you know everyone at the moment is struggling Right? Everyone is struggling, which means that you know these attacks can increase because people are left with no other option other than to do stuff to survive. Supermarkets at the moment is a good example of that. You know, electronics and stuff used to be the most stolen items. Now, every single packet of meat you go and buy from a lot of the big chain supermarkets all have RFID tags on them because of theft. Because meat, the price of meat's gone through the roof. <clears throat> and it's actually been stolen more. So now, you know, they're putting RFID tags on it because of it. It just shows you that this cost of living that we've got at the moment, people have no other choice they're resorting to stealing just to survive you know so don't let your business become a victim the best way as i said is for you to share it but also to say to them look there is a company here in australia that can find these weaknesses for you they can look at things that you wouldn't even think about you know they don't just do high skill attacks we don't just test your physical locks and your doors and stuff like that we test your staff as well you know 
we talk when we do our presentations for classes we talk about certain things and our question that we ask before we start our presentation the very first question that we say to people ask them, is what is the easiest way for us to gain access into a facility then we get them to answer it right at the end of the presentation after we've spoken about all the methods that we use and then people always say you know oh you pick the lock or you slip the door latch and stuff like that we're like no we walk in the front door it doesn't take a whole lot high vis a ladder tool bag if you look like you're meant to be there people don't question it it is up to us to get people to start questioning it to get that whole mentality changed so i know i've waffled on for a little bit but i just want to point out that this is extremely important australia needs to change it needs to up its game when it comes to thinking about this stuff so we really appreciate everyone sharing this around telling your business that you work for telling your company you know tell your higher ups that this is a real thing this is extremely important and help us here in Australia increase our security so that's all I'm going to say I won't waffle on too much more don't forget to check out the live Q&A that Daryl and I did where we actually discussed some of this stuff and yeah I'm going to get to work it's, I've got a lot of work to get done here um, don't forget we will be having our online classes available as soon as I'm able to talk better I can get all the pre-recorded videos of that done so stay tuned for that one but share the company doubt around and help us here in Australia lift up our game so until next time stay safe stay healthy don't go get what I've got <laughs> And um, until next time, keep bloody legal. Cheers, guys.